Hey gang, Stephen Marshall, KYLandlordLaw.com, back at you with another update. Uh, and today, if you are a landlord in Lexington, the bottom line is that I have bad news, and I mean very bad news. So on October 10th, that's a little over a month from now, at 1 o'clock p.m., uh, Charlie Lanter, who is the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's Housing Commissioner, will be making a presentation about source of income discrimination to the LFUCG Social Services and Public Safety Committee. Uh, they have a meeting that day, and he's gonna make a presentation about a potential new protected class in the city of Lexington for fair housing purposes. And folks, they already have a draft of this ordinance, uh, and my guess is that, that they are looking to fast track this thing into law. Now, what does that even mean, source of income discrimination? There's a technical answer to that question, and there's a practical answer. And we're going to start with the technical legal answer. And it means that you cannot refuse to rent to someone based on their source of income, meaning based on where their rent payment comes from or where the money comes from that's going to be used to pay the rent. So right off the bat, you should notice a disconnect between the name of the concept and the reality of the concept. Now, the proponents of this ordinance know that people are conditioned to be against any kind of discrimination, okay? In our society, no one wants to be thought of as discriminatory. You don't, I don't, nobody wants that. So, the proponents try to throw all of their ideas under the umbrella of discrimination. That's how they frame their issues, and therefore, if you oppose it, you're guilty of discrimination. Don't fall for it. Now, continuing with my technical answer, the ordinance would require you to accept the following sources of payment. I'm just reading this directly from the ordinance. Income derived from wages, salaries, or other compensation for employment. No problem so far. Court-ordered payments, probably looking at child support there. Income derived from Social Security, grants, pensions, or any form of federal, state, or local public assistance and or housing assistance, including, and here it is, Section 8 vouchers. So right there at the end of the technical answer, the technical definition, you get the practical answer of the, to the question, what is source of income discrimination? The practical answer is that it's an ordinance that is going to require you by law to participate in the Section 8 voucher program. That's right. If you have an applicant with a Section 8 voucher who applies at your property and other than the Section 8 issue, they meet your tenant selection criteria, you must accept them as a tenant and lease to them. And you must participate in and comply with the requirements of the Section 8 program to do so. So what does that entail? What is involved in the Section 8 program? Some of you have never done it. Well, here's the process as I understand it. And I'm gonna give you about 10 steps that are involved in it. First. Landlords have to complete an RTA, a Request for Tenancy Approval, that's a form that they complete and they send it and a copy of the lease to the LFUCG Housing Authority, okay? The landlord then completes a second form that describes the unit, describes the condition of the unit, and lists the amenities that the unit has. Third, after that's been done, an inspector must schedule and complete an inspection of your unit along with an eight-page inspection report to make sure that it meets the quality standards established by the housing authority. Now, you can't sign a lease until your unit is inspected and the inspector completes that form that verifies that it meets all quality standards. If your unit fails the inspection, if it doesn't meet those standards, the housing authority notifies you in writing and you have to make the necessary repairs or changes. 
And I'll tell you, inspectors will say privately they believe that they can always find something to disqualify a property if they look hard enough. So right off the bat, that tells you that it, this is certainly subject to some abuse and puts those inspectors uh, in, in a position uh, where they could potentially use that pos po position uh, to fail units for owners that they simply don't like or don't get along with. Now, once you make any repairs that are required, you have to notify the housing authority in writing and request another inspection. Ultimately, your lease and the amount of rent that you charge must be approved by the housing authority. Yeah, they have veto power over the amount of rent you can charge and over the terms of your lease. Next, the housing authority has to complete all of its internal paperwork and notify you of their approval for you to enter into a lease agreement with the tenant. Okay, now all this is happening even though the tenant may be completely satisfied with your unit as is. And in a conventional property where you would go ahead and be leasing to them, you have to wait and the tenant has to wait for this process to be completed. Ultimately, step nine is you must sign a housing assistance program contract, a HAP contract with the housing authority. And then on the back end, after you've leased to the tenant, at least 90 days before the lease ends, you have to schedule another inspection with the housing authority. And if any repairs are needed, you have to make those repairs or the housing assistance program contract terminates and presumably you cannot renew the lease. Okay? So that's kind of the process and just thinking about this even if it went as smoothly as it could possibly go there's going to be a delay in renting your properties okay that's best case scenario but this is government that we're talking about this is bureaucracy that we're talking about so it's not going to go smoothly you're going to run into a number of snags that delay the process uh, there was a survey that was conducted among landlords in kentucky ohio and indiana and over 400 of them. And what they reported were that it can take days or weeks just to schedule the inspection and a longer time, obviously, to get the inspection completed. This is that first inspection. It's nearly impossible to know what will cause inspectors to fail the unit. Now, even though the standards are listed, different inspectors emphasize different things and require different levels of compliance than others. Third, inspectors often fail units over silly issues. One person reported that they got failed, their property failed because there were no address numbers on the back door of a property. And then subsequent inspections, after you think that you've made all the necessary corrections, subsequent inspections will fail the unit over issues that were not mentioned, even though they may have been present, during the previous inspection. So that's the process. Sound fun? You're now required to contract with the government. Welcome to hell. So there's a reason that a 2018 professional study found that of the landlords that refused to participate in the Section 8 program, nearly 70%, I believe it was, it was 68%, were previous participants in the program. They gave it a try, but said no thanks once they experienced the, pro the problems associated with it. Now, all of you folks who have participated in Section 8 in the past, you know what I'm talking about. And all you folks who have avoided it by simply putting, we don't take Section 8 in your ads, life is about to change dramatically because that's no longer going to be an option unless you take some serious action and take it quickly. Because if this ordinance passes and you don't participate in the Section 8 program, you just say, I'm not going to do it, you're going to be charged with housing discrimination and the Lexington Human Rights Commission will first investigate and decide that you violated the ordinance. Then they will have their contracted attorney sue you in the Fayette Circuit Court seeking damages, a civil penalty ranging from $10,000 to $50,000, punitive damages, and attorney's fees. So, folks, action is needed. For landlords, this is a hill to die on, okay? 
Here are your action steps. Number one, you need to email the entire Urban County Council. Okay, and I'm going to link the email uh, in the blog post that accompanies this video on my website, kylandlordlaw.com. Let them know what a terrible proposal this is. Okay? Second, October 10th at 1 o'clock, you need to show up to that committee meeting. Now, this is just a committee meeting, so presumably there will be no public comments allowed, but you still need to be there. And you need to let the members of the committee know that you are watching. You're watching who supports this proposal, and you're ready to take action against anyone who supports it. Third, you need to spread the word to other landlords. You need to create some real awareness about this issue because I'm telling you, if this passes, life is going to change for you as a landlord. And then fourth, if you have relationships with council members, set up a phone call or a meeting, okay? As I said, this is a hill to die on. Make it clear that if they support this or for any council member that supports this, you're going to put your finances and your time and your energy towards supporting a challenger in the next election for that council member. Folks, don't let anyone tell you that this ordinance is not important. Don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't have support on the council. Okay, I talked to some folks the other day who, who basically they heard that uh, people on the council are 100% sure it's going to pass. Folks, the time is now to take some action. Because I'm telling you, once you're required to go into business with the government, after that, it's death by a thousand cuts. The terms of the program now, as bad as they are, they can be changed and made worse than they are. Okay, This is a hill to die on. It's time to take some action. Uh, this is your friendly neighborhood attorney. If you need any help, I'm at smarshall at triplesslaw.com or 859-685-0035. Let's get moving and stop this awful ordinance from taking effect. Have a great day.